Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan has received the director of Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, Sergei Narishkin. Pashinyan and Narishkin discussed bilateral relations, regional security, and other processes taking place in the South Caucasus. Narishkin's visit comes just after the head of the CIA, William Burns, paid a surprise visit to the country. Prior to that, Iran's security chief, Ali Shamkhani, too paid a high-profile visit to Armenia. It remains unclear, however, why these high-ranking intelligence and security heads all came to Armenia in such a short span of time. And Armenian Foreign Minister Arad Mirzoyan held a telephone conversation with U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs Karen Donfried. They discussed the latest developments in the process of normalizing relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan, as well as the process of unblocking regional transport links and demarcating the border with Azerbaijan. Donfried and Mirzoyan also talked about the July 16th meeting between Mirzoyan and Azerbaijani Foreign Minister Jehun Bayramov in Tbilisi. Mirzoyan stressed the importance of the OSC Minsk Group's role in achieving a peaceful settlement of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken wrote on Twitter that the Bayram of Mirzoyan meeting in Tbilisi was a positive step and that direct dialogue is the surest path to resolving differences. And Nagorno-Karabakh's health ministry is reporting that in the first half of 2022, 792 babies were born in Nagorno-Karabakh. Compared to the same period last year, the number of births increased by almost 200. The increase comes as many in the region grow increasingly wary of a potential future depopulation in Nagorno-Karabakh, which has been facing a variety of humanitarian crises since the end of the 2020 war. And senior South Caucasus analyst for the International Crisis Group, Olesia Vartanyan, has written an article about Armenia-Turkey normalization. In the article, Vartanyan advises the Armenian side to be patient, writing that Yerevan is trying to press ahead as fast as possible so that normalization doesn't halt as it has in the past. Vartanyan writes, Armenia should be patient. Even the small agreements on air cargo and border crossings for foreigners are significant. A lack of concrete steps now could doom to failure their hopes for eventual normalization at a time of rising conflict around the world. But a small step strategy seems to be the only one possible at the moment. Vartanyan also mentioned that major powers such as the US, EU and Russia seem, at least for now, to be letting Armenia-Turkey normalization happen. And as for Azerbaijan, if it sought concessions over Nagorno-Karabakh, it now sees the economic opportunities that normalization would bring, including the opening of regional transport links. Vartanyan moreover advised Yerevan to start preparing the Armenian population for normalization and for the country's economy to have a transition period to avoid sudden shocks.